were you surprised at the just how crazy it got? And then, and I don't know, you know, I, I'm watching the film and I didn't know how to take this one part when when uh, the police captain goes and he visits um, Raphael after Russell Poole. And judging by the conversation or the tone of it, it almost felt like it went all the way up to the top. I don't know if I misread that, but- You're a smart, you're a smart man. I've been, I've been thinking this whole interview, this guy's wicked smart. And you're, I, I've done a lot of interviews now. And um, I, truthfully, I'm not a sycophant. You're very impressive. Uh, there were many, many legal issues with regards to um, Bernard Parks, the chief of police. And I was strictly told like, this is the box you have to carve and you cannot go outside of it. So in your earlier question, I intended to answer that and forgot. Um, so uh, I had to find my way of just saying something. And I, I can really <laughs> leave it at that. And, and I think you, you, you nailed it, you got it. Um, yeah, and, and the stuff I uncovered regarding that that um, I, so Don launched, Don Sikorsky launched the Dossier podcast. And I will make sure today that if Don has not got that in there, we will get in there. But um, what you are alluding to, which is very factual, there are things that I could not put in the film that are mind blowing and unimaginable. So I will, I will make the effort for those that are interested beyond the scope of the movie um, I would suggest to check out Don's Dossier podcast because he worked in conjunction and built it with Phil Carson, the former FBI agent um, with the LAPD. But you got it. That's a, it, it, this is probably the nicest moment for me in the journey on a personal level because when you're told you can't do something and you have all this legal pressure on you um, and I, I abide it, I had to find my way to just put the wink and the nod in there or to hit it up. And to think that you got it, uh, that makes me think and believe maybe other people did. So um, no, I, I think if you watch the film, mm -hmm. um, if you really pay close attention to it, because I, I was kind of like, like, really? I was like, I can't wait. What's, go, what's going on here? <laughs> yeah, because it, it would make no sense otherwise. It, like, you got to fall on the sword here. So I fought yeah. so hard to get that stuff in the movie, you have no idea. Are I you mean, serious? yeah, this stuff was tough. This was, this, I fought, I, you're bringing me back, man, to some painful, crazy stuff, man. I, I, I fought, uh, there's a lot of things in there too. So, uh, because I felt like that was our job and responsibility that, that you know, uh, same thing with the Amir Muhammad stuff. Um, Absolutely. You know, stuff is tricky stuff. Nah, it, it, and again, it feels like when you go down this rabbit hole, you have no idea just how deep it gets. It, it's it's almost unbelievable. And because of that, you know, it's almost like this crime would never be solved. It can't be. It, it will just, uh, it will uncover just way too many things that people need to keep secret. Yeah, uh, it does not serve the larger, greater, you know, LAPD and the city. But um, I, I'd like to believe we solved it in the movie. Well, put it this way, you know, uh, before I let you go, I thought I thought it was so uh, clever, if you, maybe the clever is not the word. I, I love the way that you put in when, when, when Miss Wallace, uh, had the, the lawsuit against the city of Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And it was a mistrial, if I get it correct. Yes. But the case is now reopened. And because it's an active investigation, nobody can get their hands on their, those files while this thing is an, ap an active investigation. Mm -hmm. But it will never get solved anyway. So this thing will just go on and they'll never have, no one will ever have closure. Yeah, and yeah. I just thought that that was dope that you put that in there because again, that's one of those legal loopholes. Yeah, it, 
it, you know, whenever I was going through these things, there were moments where I was like, wait, what does this mean? Or like, even if I think I know what a mistrial is, I still got to go look it up or ask Sergio, hey, man, can you explain this to me? Like, you know, my parents having, you know, legal background, like talking to my pops being like, can you explain? So I realized, well, wait a second. If I'm trying to figure, and this was not just one, there was many of these things. Like, if I'm trying to figure these things out, I got to make a movie for anybody that they could just get it. So I, I was very, you know, much trying to make sure, like I, I spoke to Miss Wallace about that a lot. Like we built that on purpose. So she purposefully in the scene explains it to you like, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> it's not, not it's this. Cause I talked to people and they were like, oh yeah, they lost the case. So many people were like, they lost the case. And I was like, what, what? I can't, this was another head scratcher. Like on the internet, all the theories that were prominent. I was like, no, they didn't. Why do people think this? And I started to die. I realized people didn't understand it. So because they didn't understand it, um, that that basically was like, okay, we have to rectify that narrative. I mean, in a small way, I did that with Wardell Faust. Like Wardell Faust was never like, you know, I mean, he wasn't in the original screenplay I got. I understood it was in the book. It was the LAPD's theory. But that's why, um, you know, I, I, I sort of baked that into the conversation Forrest has you know, and I did it as the audience, right? So he hears from the police officer, this case is closed, word out Faust. He's like, oh, I'll go find him. And then you're like, boom, he's dead. And then, you know, you're the Jack, right? At that moment, the audience is with Jack, but then he takes it back to Johnny. And if you look at it, what does Johnny's character do? He explains it. Correct. So that, that, all that, there's a lot of that in the movie because I'm like, how do you, how, you got to explain the word out Faust thing. You can't just like, so... It's similar connective tissue. Like there was a lot of things I was like, people don't understand this. We have to explain it. So I had to find savvy ways, clever, good word, ways to like Trojan horse those little things in and get them in and like make sure they were clear for people and and dummy proof, you know, like make sure they really, because if you get confused in a movie and you're thinking about that while the movie's moving ahead, I, I failed at my job. No, so, you did an excellent job. You did an excellent job. Oh, thank you, man. I really, yeah, you really did. Uh, and I wasn't just saying that at the top of this interview. I really enjoyed it. I thought, I thought you told a very cohesive story. Uh, you talking about explaining, we're also talking about, you know, things being suppressed. Can you explain to, to me as the audience, uh, th this movie it wasn't shot yesterday. <laughs> what took so long for this movie to see the light of day? Um... We were in what I considered to be an ideal situation to have this movie released. The distributor Open Road, run by a wonderful man, Tom Ortenberg, uh, who had released Spotlight and won it to won awards with it. <coughs> I felt that there was no better distributor to get the movie into the world. Unfortunately, that company was owned by, um, actually, I believe AMC Theaters. And it was like the first venture for them. And for whatever reason, they wanted to move on in their business end. And we were sort of caught in that. And that company got sold and the company was sold to went bankrupt. So <clears throat> that was the beginning of the end uh, of a lot of problems. And um, the movie was like caught in this legal mess. Uh, just because of my experience prior to the movie and then after um, there was a million other things happening that I felt, could I sit here and actually explain them in a manner that you would say, I get that. There's just a lot of, you, you, you understand uh, things operate at a higher level. I think there was a lot of people that did not want this movie to come out. I think that was black and white to me. And I think those people, some of them are incredibly influential. And um, I think that was par and parcel to the other problems this movie was having. Um, and, uh, you know, Johnny was going through some really difficult stuff, which didn't make it any easier as well. And, you know, uh, it, I, I guess it was just par for the course that uh, this suppressed story would be suppressed for longer. It is really um, some type of small miracle. I, I'm still, I, I still can't believe the movie's out. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. 
And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.